Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're talking about comets. But more specifically we're actually talking about the incredible progenitor of some of the most incredible, most bright and most memorable comets that have ever occurred in history. You may not believe but they all came from one single object. And let's talk about this today, welcome to What The Math. Now this comet right here um, is actually one of the so-called, I guess, children of the progenitor comet. Now what is this progenitor? Well, I'll talk about this in a few minutes, but let me just show you first one of the videos that um, people just haven't found on YouTube but has been there for a few years now. This is a video directly from NASA. And this particular video, known as Lots of Comets, shows you the simulation the, uh, with the date right here on the bottom. Um, of various comets uh, that basically enter the inner solar system that we tracked over um, many, many years. And um, it actually shows you very precisely where those comets came from and where they basically went afterwards. A lot of them, as you can see, fell into the sun. But you'll notice that many of them seem to be coming from basically a single direction. These red comets. It's almost as if someone was just throwing things at our inner solar system from that particular direction. Now, at first, um, I kind of scratched my head and said, well, what's going on in there? Is that some sort of a conspiracy? Is this like this Nibiru planet that people uh, conspirated about? That is not a word, don't quote me on that. Um, but obviously there's, there's a very, very simple scientific explanation. And the explanation is that these red comets um, that go by the name of Kreutz comets, or Kreutz sun grazers, because they approach sun very, very close, um, have actually been visiting our inner solar system for many, many years, for practically 2,000 years, two millennia, since um, the year about 326, I actually had to look it up, Th the year 326. And that is when we believe it all started, with this so-called progenitor comet, this very large object, massive object that was probably about 100 kilometers in um, radius, um, equivalent to, I guess, some of the dwarf planets, that approached the inner solar system and the sun basically shredded it to pieces. And that resulted in those red comets that you see on your screen. Now, every single one of them is a real object that approached our solar system. And what's really interesting is that all of them, with no exception, have been responsible for some of the brightest sightings throughout the history. Now, I'm going to need Google's help uh, to actually list some of them, but basically, the Great Comet of 1882, um, the Comet Pereira, the Lovejoy, Comet White Ortiz Bolayli, and uh, Comet Ikea Seki from 1965, and the comet I just showed you a few minutes ago, uh, Ikea Zhang. So, all of these comets, they were some of the brightest, well, actually, brightest comets we've ever seen, ever in history. A lot of them left uh, a lot of premonitions and uh, predictions and basically people even killed themselves and or uh, created religions because of those comets. Um, but they all came from essentially one single object. And this object doesn't have a name, we just call it a progenitor. But according to the scientific calculations, this progenitor approached the inner solar system sort of from the same direction where you see those uh, red comets coming, um, approximately uh, 2,000 years ago, in, in the year 326. Now, we don't really have any sort of mentioning of this object, we don't really um, have enough historical evidence. Uh, this was sort of like the fall of the Roman Empire uh, period, uh, right before the Dark Ages, so maybe people just weren't really looking into the skies. But chances are this object created some of the most incredible sights, uh, uh, probably one of the brightest comets uh, humanity has ever observed. Now, um, what you see on the screen right now, and now let me actually just talk a little bit about comets, are essentially two tails. Now, you may not know that all comets have two tails, and what is a comet? Well, it's actually just an asteroid that contains um, a lot of ices in it that start uh, evaporating as it approaches the sun. Now, this particular object, as you can see right now, is close to 90 degrees Celsius, uh, pretty toasty, 
And so it starts steaming and the steam starts leaving this long sort of tail that you see that is formed um, by the actual comet itself. But it also has this other tail that is not made of out of dust. This is actually all dust. Uh, this, however, is ions. So some of this dust uh, gets breaking down by the sun that you see right there somewhere. Um, and uh, as the sun breaks down some of the dust, it releases ions. And basically those ions get influenced uh, by the solar radiation and um, they follow the um, emission of the ultraviolet light and other light that is ionized. And so thus this creates two tails. So one is dust and one is just um, charged particles. If you actually come close to this comet, if you literally just decide to land on it past all of this dust and ions, you'll just find a simple boiling, well, not really boiling yet, but very hot rock. And we're going to go and do that right now. Now, so like I said before, and here we are approaching a little bit closer. Um, so all of these objects, all of these really bright comets that we've seen for many, many years, um, including some of the comets that might be coming um, to the inner solar system in the next few years, all of those comets, without exception, um, they pretty much came from a single progenitor object. This object was really, really big. Uh, you could kind of compare it to, I guess, um, the one of the largest asteroids, uh, Vesta, although a little bit smaller, actually. Um, we don't really know where it came from. It most likely came from the Kuiper Belt, basically from um, the region where Pluto is. Uh, but it's also possible that it came from farther away. And uh, so this is the comet that we were looking at from a distance, it's just a rock. And so now this rock is going to disappear behind all of this dust and all of these ions. All right, so this progenitor um, seems to have basically uh, fell apart. It literally created thousands upon thousands, and I guess a more accurate number is millions upon millions of these particles. Some of them were very large, some of them were very small, uh, some of them uh, just fell into the sun directly, but a lot of them didn't, and a lot of them are still out there, and a lot of them are actually still orbiting in the same orbit that this progenitor orbited in. Now, it actually happened in stages, uh, and we even have sort of a, a, a schematic for these stages. And I guess uh, here it is. So we have the progenitor that occurred around the year 326 that basically separate into two pieces. Uh, one of them was the super fragment one, no other name, and one of them was super fragment two. And we actually have an event that is associated with this particular situation. And it was known as X1106C1. Uh, it's the event also known as the Great Comet of 1106, seen from a lot of parts. Uh, a lot of uh, Asian astronomers actually mention it and even draw it. Um, and what's interesting is that then, uh, then this particular comet actually split into other parts that created their own very, very bright comets later on, such as the infamous Great Comet of 1882 and the Great Comet of 1843. And also these two comets here were surprisingly bright as well. So pretty much every one of these fragments was at some point observed as one of the greatest comets that have ever visited humanity. Um, but most interestingly, and I guess this is actually where it gets a little bit more intriguing, is that we are far from being done with the Kreutz Sun Grazers. And these comets, as you can see, just keep coming and coming. And somewhere out there is a very large piece that is going to create yet another extraordinary site in the next few years, possibly decades and maybe hundreds of years. We don't really know when it's going to happen, but we are almost certain that it's going to happen because those fragments, they actually separate into other fragments and some of those bigger pieces are still orbiting in a very similar orbit. Now, um, it approaches, or these fragments approach the sun relatively close, only about 200,000 kilometers away from the sun itself. So many of them completely disintegrate upon approach, but some of them don't and some of them create even more fragments. But nevertheless, What's important here is that it's actually going to most likely occur during our lifetime. So the next maybe 30, 40, 50 years, we're going to see yet another visitor, another great comet, and it's going to be absolutely marvelous. And it's actually really important to understand that all of this started close to 2000 years ago. It's, it's absolutely mind blowing that all of this is still happening and all of this is happening because of this one object. So hopefully we'll get to visit uh, at least one of these objects, maybe this one right here that I have in Space Engine, uh, or possibly some other one uh, that 
will hopefully not really disappear just yet and we'll maybe even land on it, retrieve some of the information and some of the actual samples. Anyway, that's really all I wanted to show in this video. I wanted to talk about this incredible event and uh, most importantly introduce how all of these great comments were actually connected to this one fragment from about 2000 years ago. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you enjoyed this video and share this with someone who enjoys learning about space through video games and come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe even click that bell button so you get notified automatically and maybe even support this channel on Patreon because you know it does help me a lot. See you guys tomorrow, space out and as always, bye bye.